Shalom and welcome. You're listening to me, your presenter, Esther. Today on Awaz Community Radio, we have Kamal as a national diabetes. Thank you, Kamal, for coming in. Good morning. Good morning, Esther. Please can you explain to my listeners what the National Diabetes Prevention Programme is and what diabetes is all about? Um, So the National Diabetes Prevention Programme um, is a joint initiative with uh, Diabetes UK, Public Health England and NHS England. Um, And it was a few years ago they've they've realised that um, diabetes is a very rising concern, especially type 2, and we're getting more and more people who get diagnosed with diabetes type 2 every year. And we found out through research that diabetes prevention programs, if you prevent it from happening in the first place, the, the results are much, much better in terms of delaying the onset of it. So is diabetes type 1 the one where people are born with the diabetes? Yes, yeah, so they're either born with it or they're born with um, the genetic predisposition to get it triggered at some point in life. Uh, so you could be, they could be fine up until the age of 7, they could be fine up until the age of 12, uh, 14, even 30, and something in their life has triggered this condition, but they've always had the predisposition of having that in their genes. How can diabetes be prevented, and how can I prevent it? Um, so type 2 diabetes can be prevented by um, adapting certain life habits. Um, so we need to look at the, um, the overall eating habits that we have, you know, the food groups that we consume. Um, do we overtake carbohydrates do we take too much sugar um it's not actually just about sugar it's an overall dietary um influence that 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 affects it um also our um physical activity levels play a huge part in that and if we are physically active uh the more uh, our body uses the glucose from from the blood which can be a problem uh when you're diagnosed with type 2 diabetes What are the government trying to do to prevent diabetes from happening in the future? So uh, the government has actually been quite good with this. So in the last few years, um, Public Health England um, has, you know, given, you know, uh, the made funds available uh, for companies that can uh, use their expertise with uh, people su- such like uh, such as me um, to deliver programs to help people change their lifestyles and give them that one-to-one support that they might need to make those changes in order to either delay or prevent them from developing type 2 diabetes in the first place. Right, and so um, obviously we're more today, we are more stressed, we are more needy for chocolates and you know within the past 50 years diabetes has gone worse what are we doing that's changed our eating pattern in the past 50 years it's it's to do with eating patterns and with physical activity we're actually a lot more sedentary than we used to be in the last 50 years you know our jobs have become more sedentary it's more computer work and um, people less go from one place to another by walking people drive everywhere they take the public transport um, and so we are moving less and less uh, we have less laborers jobs um, and also the convenience of packaged food so let's grab everything really quickly uh, so we can just get energy out of it you know let's just do that and people have kind of fallen into this um, this this habit of just grabbing anything that's near to them and often the things that we grab that are near to us you know tend to be those really high energy foods you know such as chocolate such as crisps such as you know you know proper convenience foods um, and packaged meals you know ready-made meals we don't really know what's inside them um, and when we do you know it's 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 not good and do you think also portion size have changed? Do you think we eat bigger portion sizes? Yeah, we definitely eat a lot more. The size of the cutlery, I think, has changed. You know, um, I think it was 50 years ago when the cutlery forks were actually smaller. Um, we have a habit of filling our plates uh, to the to the beam. You know, we go to buffets where, you know, we, we think it's okay to put fish fingers and fried chicken on the same plate and you know and 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 and, you know that that is not healthy that is not what we're supposed to be eating we should be thinking of all the food groups and how can we make all the food groups fit into one meal in in the right ratio that there should be on it 
So in 2008, Prime Minister David Cameron placed a tax on fizzy drinks to come in force in 2018. Do you think this problem has going to get better or do you think it has gone worse? In terms of fizzy drinks, um, when we look at type 2 diabetes, um, I know there's a there's a lot of media attention on sugar um, and diabetes isn't funnily enough as much as we think it's not just to do with sugar it's not because you have taken in too much sugar people who you know want these fizzy drinks the little tax that they're going to put on it isn't going to stop them from drinking them okay so I still think they are going to um, get hold of these things um, and, and, and as I said, it's not just to do with sugar, it's to do with an overall lifestyle, it's an overall diet. It could be, you know, abdominal obesity, it, it could be, you know, high cholesterol that could affect, you know, type 2 diabetes risk. There's, there's many other things, you know, um, that, that can affect it rather than just sugar. So concentrating on just this just one thing, um, I'm not sure if that's really what's going to make the difference. And if one wants to get information regarding diabetes and the National Diabetes Prevention Programme, how can they go about doing this? So they've got a few ways that, that, that they can do this. They can either go to their GP, they can go to their local health centre, um, they, they can go online, uh, they can <clears throat> Google uh, places such as Diabetes UK is a very good site, there's a lot of information on that. Um, and the GP will be able to um, give them information as well. Uh, there are some areas where I know I work in, you know, I don't think Salford comes under it, but Barry definitely comes under it, um, Rochdale, Oldham. Uh, we do have programs that are already in place. So, so people who the GP believes are in a risk of developing type 2 diabetes, they do get referred to us straight away and we take them under us and... and hopefully to prevent them from becoming type 2 diabetic in the future. And hopefully, please God, you will see changes and people will have prevented themselves from getting diabetes because it is unfortunately, it's a very big risk today, isn't it? It's, it's a huge risk and there's actually 200,000 people that are being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes every year in the UK. And there's about 5 million who have got type 2 diabetes already. Some, some of it is not very well controlled. Uh, when it's not well controlled, it puts more pressure on hospitals. People who are type 2 diabetic and are in hospital are more likely to stay there for longer, they are more likely to develop complications. Um, there's, there's loads of things that are actually associated with type 2 diabetes that we don't quite understand. We just think, oh, it's that sugar illness, when it's not. It's an overall health risk. So, but then once somebody's got the diabetes, you're saying it then can, it can then be controlled? Um, the the thing the good thing with type two diabetes is so that so the good news is is that it is actually reversible and I have seen people reverse type two diabetes. Um, we measure this by a test called HbA one C, which measures the amount of glucose that is bound to our red blood cells, and age affects this. Okay, genetics affect it. So as we get older, it's harder for the body to cope with this glucose in the blood. Um, but there are little tricks in the books and there are still things that we can do, even if you've genetically been predisposed to having it um, or controlling it worse than someone else, even if you have exactly the same diet, there's still some things that you know we can do on these programs that can help you either delay the onset of it or if you've already got it, to help you control it so there's no complications and possibly no medications with it. Can diabetes type 2 cause blindness though? Or was that type 1? Um, diabetes type 2 can cause blindness. So it's actually uh, the most prevalent condition at the moment in the UK that causes, you know, uh, early onset of blindness or other sight issues. Um, it's in quite extreme cases, okay? So it's not something that happens quite often, but... It, it still happens and we still need to be aware of it. So people who have got type 2 diabetes or have been diagnosed with it recently should get their eyes checked at least once a year. Thank you so much, Carmel. You can follow us on Twitter or like our Facebook page at Awaz Community Radio. Thank you, shalom and have a good day.